All right, well, welcome back to Health Made Easy. Uh, I'm your host, Dr. Jason Jones, and I'm super excited for our guest today. We have Michael Hughes on today, and he is the founder of Gymnazo. Uh, he's going to tell you a little bit about that in, in a minute, but I want to tell you about what our topic is going to be for the day. We're going to talk about why cardio, yes, your elliptical, your treadmill, your bike, why that's so 2010 uh, when it comes to your fitness. So, Michael, thanks for coming on, man. Uh, super excited to have you. I know that some of our podcast listeners may not know you, may have never heard of you before. So just give us a little bit of an intro, who you are, what you do, uh, and then we'll get into the material. All right, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I'd like to call myself a, uh, a uh, failed physical therapy grad student um, who uh, didn't give up on a passion and a dream to provide an industry with something that uh, maybe they didn't know that they didn't have, you know, kind of that, that ap approach to it all. Um, uh, my whole, my, from the eighth grade, Dr. Jones, from the eighth grade, I knew that I wanted to be somebody that could really influence movement. Mm. Um, and uh, I just started at a high school gym, truly, you know, just literally taking workouts from Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding and literally copying it, giving it to the football players on, you know, who were above me and um, seeing change and it was really pretty radical like i can even though i didn't write the programming but to see the change and they thank me for it that really sparked something pretty pretty big so that's awesome that really it, cool. it, it was it was actually a huge revolution point in my, in my life um backstory not understood yet but you know it's really a big big play and to understand that like okay what is the field that i thought in movement was the top layer and my thought back then was physical therapy so Kinesiology, you know, uh, undergraduate, da 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 da, da. and um, I didn't really realize that I just was never a very good standardized test taker. Mm -hmm. You know, elementary school, I was just never got. I never felt dumb per se. You know, I didn't. Yeah. You know, never felt like top of the class, but I just never. I never exceeded in those. You know, SAT scores just never, never, never shined. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Me so when neither. it came to get, yeah, well. And I'm glad because I would have been in a whole different situation if I, if I did. But getting into grad school just never happened. You know, okay. just, I tried eight different times and um, I kind of feel blessed that I didn't get in because I would be, as we were talking about, in the insurance rigmarole, you know, traditionally trained to follow protocol and standards and don't question a study that's been put out in a journal because... Yeah. That's evidence-based practice, and you can't question that. That's blasphemy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, da 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 da, da. Um, So uh, what, what ended up happening is, is by not getting in is I, w I was uh, stuck in the personal training world. And as, you, as I consider the personal training world in the medical model is the used car salesman of the industry. It's about mm -hmm. as low as it gets. Now, sorry for any used car salesman out, out there, but, you know, it's that kind of like, gosh, you know, you're really just taking up the muck of the muck in, in a sense. Yeah. And um, the goal and desire was to create a facility that really created an environment of a um, kind of behavioral success first, and then movement success second, yeah. and then kind of community success, you know, third. And those all blend together. And um, that's what Jim Mazza really is. It's, it's, a, it's a movement based facility. I don't even call it a gym, even though it's in the name. Uh, I call it, I, I own a movement facility or a training facility, and our job is to take from, I mean, baby boomer plus all the way down to as young as they want and teach them the movement literacy that the gift of movement get, gives us, yeah. that we can really explore, you know, um, all dimensions of movement. And that first page in all kinesiology, bio, biology, anatomy books, when it describes the three planes of the human body, I was never shown on actually how to exercise in those ways. Mm. And so that's what we do. We really, we really explore human potential. And it's pretty cool to see some, you know, baby boomers plus that are moving well, well into their seventies, eighties, and yeah. continue to just continue to have that lifestyle that versus like, mm, I'm retired now time to park ourselves on the couch and just wait until the final day. No, yeah, thanks. No, no yeah, no. no, thanks. And I'm with you on no that. Thanks. I think, um, no. you know, and it's, it's so fascinating, you know, it's like when, 
when people are younger, you know, they're like, well, I can move, you know, I, I can move this way. I can move that way. I can do this exercise. I can lift this much, all these other kinds of things. But I think what people don't realize, and this is where like an expertise like you have really comes in is just because you can move, that doesn't mean that's supporting your, your physiology, you know what I mean? Or, or supporting right. like your well being or your joints or your muscle tissue or tendons or ligaments or anything like that. You could be moving in patterns that are actually very destructive, you know, for you. And just with 100%. some, with some, with some training, with some, just getting the time and getting the repetitions in, you could set that person up for a life of like they could never even imagine uh, of the, you know, in their seventies, eighties and nineties, just moving, and, you know, and doing things that otherwise they would have destroyed their hips and knees and spine and everything else. Um, just because they didn't know they weren't moving correctly. Yeah, and it's really that that funny phrase of movement awareness. You know, we we don't know what we don't know, yep. and it's tough to not. It's you know, how would you know it? Um, unless someone walks around with a mirror in front of you everywhere you go, you don't see yourself move, and your proprioceptive system's designed to kind of follow the path of least resistance, mm -hmm. and which it should. I and mean, that's kind of that's physics, right? Yep. Um, so. As we, we always say, and this, you know, we kind of say this jokingly, that everyone joins a relationship with a little bit of baggage that they bring to that relationship. Well, sure. everyone joins our facility with a little bit of movement baggage that they bring to this relationship. And it's yeah. our job to, to sniff it out. And, oh, I love you know, it, man. I love yeah. it. Well, There's, you know, speaking of baggage, um, uh, people have a lot of baggage around cardio. You know, I mean, there's, I mean, the, the cardio part of most gyms take up the entirety of the gym. And then there's a couple of, there's a couple of free weights around, you know, yeah. um, yeah. what, why is cardio first off, you know, why is it so 2010, you know, what, what is it, why do people get stuck on it? You know, what's wrong with it, you know, per se, in your opinion? Yeah, fair, fair enough. Well, I've, I've learned that, you know, nothing's really wrong with anything, but there's quite a limit to what that is. And right. if I could be driving, you know, a Tesla and I've been driving a Beetle, I would like to pick the other, the first option if I, if I knew it was a possibility. And, yeah. you know, growing up in that big box gym setting, working there for several years, yeah, you got treadmill alley, you got the whole things, like that's one side of the whole facility. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting because if you think about cardio in, in the traditional sense, even jump rope, right? It's not even on an elliptical. It's so 1D. It's so mm -hmm. forward. Yep. Stair stepper, elliptical, recumbent, all the different bikes, excuse me, you know, um, all those things. It's just always forward, 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 forward. And I get, you know, running is a very three-dimensional drill, but in the terms of it's the primary motion is still forward. And that's not really how sports or athleticism is played. Right. That's how we burn calories. But is burning calories really fitness? Is lifting weights, even on the other side of that spectrum, fitness? And uh, in, the, in this traditional sense of definition, it is. But that's not movement fitness. That's mm. not applicable fitness. That's not lifestyle fitness. So everything yeah. we do in the cardio alley doesn't necessarily translate or very little bit translates to actual real life and human biomechanical kinesthetic chain reaction movement patterns which is where we get injured which is where we don't have the success we want where we start to judge our, ourselves in the real world but we look good and we can sweat a lot yeah but yeah, so it's really interesting like there's new technology out there and it's not really new you know nothing new is under the sun right we're just figuring out how to piece it together you know so it's really kind of in, in, in this world of fitness we're saying like wait a minute how do you actually want to move versus right. how do you see it practiced moving so we ask a, a lot of questions like, what do you not a goal but like how do you live your life mm -hmm. and if it's a if it's a if it's someone in their, in their 60s, gosh, they, they either love to, you know, golf, pickleball, hiking, swimming, outdoor activities, playing with grandchildren, those kind of things. And so, okay, well, what are those movement patterns that you actually go through to do those things? Yeah. And they look nothing like Treadmill Alley. Okay, no. let's go to the soccer mom. Let's go to the weekend warrior. Let's go to that, you know, 40, 50-year-old something in a sense. It's like, okay, what do you do? Gosh, I, I love surfing, mountain biking. Again, that matches really nothing 
on the equipment machine. Well, they say, well, but biking does, I know, but you're actually overdoing it. Mm-hmm. You know, if I, if, if I go lay out in, in the sun on a Saturday and then lay on the sun again on a Sunday and then a Monday and then a Tuesday, what's my skin going to do? Yeah. Oh, that's very simple. It's going to get overburnt and da da da. It's like that's what your joints are doing. That's what your connective tissue is doing. Yeah. Um, and so it's really this kind of this understanding that fitness is, has a new evolution. Thank you, Jane Fonda. Really appreciate you, Arnold. You're the man. I appreciate it. But we've got an iPhone 13, 14, 15 coming out now. It's time yeah. that we upgrade our services. Um, and yeah. it's hard. It's different. You got to rewrite how gyms look. You got to rewrite how programming looks. You got to rewrite how we think. Um, so it's better though. It's just flat. It's more fun. It's more effective. Um, you can produ- actually produce injury prevention, injury avoidance. I think that's a better way to say it in these things. Um, but I think a lot of people get scared because like, Ooh, that's unsafe. Mm. I'm going to hurt myself doing that. And I would say, yeah, I would say shuffling across some turf is more dangerous than on a, on a elliptical, but when I go to do squats, I don't put 400 pounds on my back and just start going. Yeah. I don't even put the barbell on my back. So mm-hmm. we got to learn how to progress. We use the word tweak, modify, you know, appropriately. So it's not like, ooh, I go from, you know, zero to 100. Like, wait a minute, there's called one mile an hour, two mile an hour, three mile an hour. And to micro tweak using yeah. biomechanics, using just our, the knowledge of this gift of movement that we have. Um, so that's been a big, big play and something I, I, I challenge the, our industry to really start kind of taking into consideration. Yeah, and I think, I think there's a, a certainly at least a small portion of it that's, that's moving in that direction. You know, you, um, how would you um, differentiate between what you guys are doing and then what's like traditionally called functional fitness? Yeah, you great know? question. Yeah. yeah. I'll say the traditional men's fitness, men's health, functional fitness is, you know, um, make it look f- different, you know, uh-huh. get out of a machine and stand on a Swiss ball, mm-hmm. jump on a box, mm-hmm. get on a row machine, yeah. hit a jump rope, you know, those kind of things. Or I would say, and I'm going to say this, you know, not disrespectfully, but CrossFit, anything that takes Olympic lifting and adds to it. You know, I would say that would be kind of a traditional functional fitness, yeah. taking a metis ball into a wall. Um, anything that's really not bolted to the ground, mm-hmm. I would say would be said the general layman's person's understanding of traditional functional fitness. Um, and I would say that's true. That's a hundred percent true, but even functional is good for a, you know, bodybuilding's functional for a person yeah. who goes up on stage. That's functional training for them. Yeah. It works for so, them. Yeah, so what we like to use is the word, we like to kind of add a different term to it, and we like to call it intentional or three-dimensional. And it's really start saying, okay, wait a minute, what do we actually need in human function? That's pretty tough when you're training a bunch of, you know, literally people, their athletes are just life. Mm-hmm. So how many movement patterns do they go through? What's their in-season, out-of-season, off-season, pre-season? <sighs> that's, a, that's a tough athlete to program for. That's yeah. a really tough athlete to program, program for. So when you start to take those things into consideration, all, possibility, all possibilities are really there. But you have to start to understand, like, wait a minute, how much do we really focus on inversion and eversion of the subtalar joint at the ankle? Mm-hmm. Do they even have access to that? Do they even have access to internal rotation at that hip to really flow through and finish through on their golf swing or even run or walk for crying out loud. Can they even load that glute? It may be weak, but can they even access the load? Um, How's their thoracic spine moving? I bet it's pretty important to how that lower back plays. Mm -hmm. You know, so those things we kind of start to really think into play and more. It's like, well, wait a minute. This is a lot more complicated than any personal training certification I've ever considered. In fact, this is getting above and beyond what some of my friends who are physical therapists coming coming through. It's not that they're not capable of it. It just breaks protocol. Right. And that's tough when you have to start critically thinking. So what does it look like? So I would say this, um, think about doing a forward lunge, you know, forward lunge, anterior lunge. Well, that I would call that, that's one of six easy lunges that we could do. Okay. So we could do a posterior lunge. Is this being recorded? Oh yeah. Oh, let's show this sucker. That's, let's I mean, do it. That's, let's might as well do is expand this thing out here, right? 
I mean, video record, excuse me. Why not? So if I do a, if I do a forward lunge, right, our typical lunge is like bend that back knee. Yeah. I would say, all right, that's not bad, but I would certainly like to get some good hip extension as I do that. Because that's yeah. how I run. That's how I hike. That's how I uh, walk, basically. I don't do that. Yeah. So if I could do that lunge, well, what's the, what's the posterior to that? Well, it would be this. Okay. I load, I weight shift to my front leg. I can weight shift to my back leg. This is not a posterior lunge. That's a posterior toe tap. This is a, be a posterior lunge in our definition. Let me switch sides so you can see it. Boom. It's almost like okay. a bit of a squat. Well, I can do a lateral lunge, but what about the opposite side lateral lunge? Okay, what about a rotational lunge? I could throw a rotational lunge in there. What about the opposite side of that ro rotational lunge? Yeah. So what I love about it, I did sagittal plane, frontal plane, and transverse plane. What I got is I got hip extension. I got hip flexion. I got hip abduction, hip adduction, hip external rotation, hip internal rotation, all very functionally. Gravity's yeah. thrown down yeah. on me. Ground reaction's coming at me. I'm authentic in my movement patterns. And I can do the same thing. I can load. I can stretch this side, but I can strengthen this side. So I got the, an, an, I got the um, posterior chain working, posterior chain working. I got my medial chains working. I got my lateral chains working up the IT band, I, you know, da, da, da. And I got all those tissues now going through rotational loading through that. And that's really cool when you start to think about muscles don't attach in straight lines. No. There's obliquities to them. Some muscles go in straight lines, some. But most of them have a curvature to them, a wrap to them, the hamstrings, right? It's an up and around. Yeah. So if I tweak my position on where my foot goes, I'm tweaking on different focuses on different muscle groups, giving access, more uh, movement literacy to more muscle groups. Therefore, I can therefore hit more groups, more fibers in more ways through mobility, stability. And now I'm probably, gosh, like, what the hell? Like, there's so many options here. And all I did is six different lunge patterns. Yeah. So is that functional? Well, some of those are not functional at all to some people, but it's certainly functional to the human spectrum of movement. And yeah. that's what we call functional. So that's a long answer, but. I, that's okay. That was a great yeah. answer. So uh, to piggyback on that. So, uh, so obviously the, the more, the more functional the movement, the more fibers we, that we incorporate, the more, um, planes of motion that we incorporate, the more well-rounded that person is yeah. in, in their ability to just do life, you know, cause they're going to, they're going to get in weird positions, you know, doing things. Exactly. I mean, you know, nobody, nobody does, you know, a, a deadlift to like pick a pencil up off the floor. You know what I mean? It's just, it's very, no. yeah, it's very, you know, it, it can be done a lot better than the way a lot of people do it. Um, but so what would it, what would a natural progression of say those, those six moves look like would it you would start with just getting the movements down the steps right and then would you start adding you know load to that would it be you know uh banded resistance how how would That's that look question. yeah so um visual i'm a I'm yeah, a kin kinesthetic guy here. So when we when we talk about like what what we just did you know that was what we call a lunge matrix and i got to mm -hmm. give credit to the great institute for Kind of coining that for us um, is really providing these different sequences to provide a good deep dive into some and to say how one, how someone moves. But if I have, let's say, someone who's brand new, 75 years old, coming for for balance work, I'm going to provide as much stability as I can yeah. to help their body out. We have a lot of these true stretches around here, so we can do that exact same program in this cage, literally every move, and I can have two hands, I can have stability i can really create a very safe environment but from away from that like if i can if i can provide extra stability i can provide more success or more mm -hmm. possibilities of success so we tend to think of like uh, like a lunge is a big thing well i can just simply change the range of motion i can still get those same patterns through a step the joints don't have as much stress through them I can certainly play in a range that allows them so I can change my range of motion. I can change my, my initial environment. Maybe turf is going to grab their shoe. I really think about that, especially on like locomotion drills, running drills. 
Yep. You know, we call these things, there, there's turf monsters that live on these things. They grab your shoe and they, they can take you down. So maybe going on to uh, rubber flooring would be a better option. So I can even be that mindful. If I even go to that point where I can change how, how I actually, what actions and what positions I'm, I'm actually in, I can actually take that same process and change it into a kneeling. So let's say the knees are healthy, whatever the case is, I can take that into a kneeling. So now I've removed the knee, the foot ankle complex, I could get much more isolated motion at my pelvis, at my hip joint, my hip complex, and I can progress all the way through here. So we use this pattern a lot for ankle sprains. Mm -hmm. How do I mobilize the hip, but not put any more damage through a wounded ankle? I still want to mobilize that hip. I still want to strengthen the, the hip. I can even do balance drills in that same pattern. I can toe tap. So now this leg is doing all the balance work as I go through those same patterns. Ugh, I want to show my, show my possibilities here <laughs> around the corner and around the corner. So in all those different ways, I can now take positioning and go af after that. And then what I li really love about all those kind of progressions, like, oh, Michael, that's the easy stuff. Um, that's a small, fine-tuned stuff. What about taking it to someone who really wants to push the limit, someone who really wants to take that and say, well, give me some more. So we like to use these, these Vipers. And from this standpoint, it's like, oh, let's take it, instead of just a clean to a press, let's take that into an anterior lunge to a clean to a press. Let's take that into an open rotational lunge to a clean to a press or even from a lateral all the way up and flow it up. So we start taking these funky patterns and load them appropriately. By the way, this is only 22 pounds versus a standard barbell. That changes the game a lot, and you can start to provide a lot more freedom of opportunity through joint ranges of motion, strength potential. And I really love about how we don't really have heavy, heavy, heavy weights here. Because yeah. me doing a deadlift from a narrow toe stance or a toed in, for crying out loud, toe stance, I don't need, I don't need 200 pounds on either side. No. You know? And so it's really kind of, you know, like Mike, Mike Boyle, a lot of these strength coaches, they're, they're kind of like they're trying to kill the two-footed squat, back, back squat, because it's not functional. I would say, yeah, we rarely do this in athleticism. In fact, very, very rare. So a single leg is appropriate. You know, they put the foot up, what case is, do a single leg. Well, I would say that's even pretty good, but when do we, when do we vertically load? Just perfect vertical load. I will say we're often toe in, we're often toe out, we're often off kilter, we're often here. So why can't we vertically load with a big old stance out here and load there. Now we get all those, those internal forces through my adductors, my me medial knee, and that's to me a lot more appropriate for an athlete, especially a female high school volleyball soccer player, not blowing their ACL out because they have lack of integrity on those medial structures versus, well, the story can go on and on. No, so, I I'm, I'm with you on that because I think the, 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 what I'm getting from it is that, you know, traditional training does make people strong in particular planes of motion, you know, yeah. but when you translate what really happens during athletics, you know, or life in general, right. you take those folks that were, they're fit, they're strong, mm -hmm. you know, but then in, in the, where it counts, they're really not that strong and they're not that capable right. and they are, and they are an injury waiting to happen. I mean, I, I, I fully get that because my undergraduate degree was in athletic training. So, um, oh, you know, very well, we were the ones that were scraping people up off the courts and yeah. off the field and, um, you know, uh, right. you know, just blown ACLs and ankles and everything else that you could ever imagine, you know? So, uh, I think that incorporating, this, even though they're going to train like that, you know, I mean, there's, you know, in their, in their weight rooms and whatever they mm -hmm. do, but putting this together with it is going to make them a much more capable athlete. Um, yeah. and gonna, it's going to prevent said. so many problems in the future for them. Perfectly said, you know, there's this, there's a, there, it's, it's really, a, 
a poor, it's an injustice when we teach an athlete that they're super strong and bench, clean, squat. Right. And they go to the, and they go to the field and they, they act like that and they perform mm-hmm. like, like that, but then they get injured and they're just like, they're just beat up. They're like everything I've done. And they just don't understand why. And it's, I'm not going to blame the coaching staff. I'm not going to blame, they're just blaming the lack of education that's filtered through the, the system. I mean, I was, I was the same person. You know, I, mm-hmm. I was the same dude going to the gym, bench press every day. Just keep bench pressing because that's Three sets looks good. Three sets. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so it, when we start to, to look at it a lot more, like what are the gaps? You know, so, you know, we actually start, we're training a lot more of our college athletes here now and they mm-hmm. have to hit the weight room. They have to. It's part, it's part of that's their participation as an athlete on, on that team. Yep. So when they come here, um, we, we fill in those, those gaps. And it's, you know, and um, it's, it's, it's amazing how they start to see like, wait a minute, like my, I'm getting a lot bigger gains in my major lifts. Yeah. I'm like, exactly. Because when you only pull one D on a, on a muscle, you're not, you're not really accessing 100% of that muscle's potential. I mean, 100% mm-hmm. is an over term, right? You're not accessing yeah, yeah. the majority of that muscle's ability to go under load. And what I love about a rubber band is the more you pull that sucker back and twist it and angle it, the more tension that you get. Yeah, there's a primary, but don't forget about the secondary and the tertiary motion patterns that can add even more pop and even more potential to decelerate and accelerate movement patterns. And it's kind of it's like, whoa, like that's for me, it was like, whoa, like there's so much more I could do as a trainer versus the standard 50 drills that we've just been plagued, plagued with. And we're still wondering why NFL people are, are getting injured preseason. It's like, yeah. wait a minute, pre, preseason, you've been doing the wrong limited lifts, excuse me, the yeah. limited lifts. A hamstring curl should not be on the, on the bucket for, for strengthening someone's running speed. Have not done one of those for years. I'm sorry. They're probably, yeah. my, hands, my curls are probably pretty weak. So, uh, yeah, but I, don't, I just don't do them, you know, um, right. let me, let me ask you this now. I'm sure, I'm sure you guys, you guys have got videos, uh, YouTube, um, you know, all of that, uh, you know, in your mm-hmm. social media and all of that. So like when folks start to follow you and start to watch your stuff, um, but let's say they're a novice, you know, whether they're 50, 40, they're, you know, they're mm-hmm. a new athlete or a weekend warrior or whatever, what would be the, like maybe the top three things that you would tell them this is where I would start with with this sort of stuff like they don't live in the area they're just gonna they're gonna try to do some of these things on their own that you might teach in a video or something oh to be quite frankly um, what I what I previously showed is where we start mm. that's actually what I showed was a movement assessment of the lower extremities okay um, you know doing a forward lunge. now some people may not be, may not be able to do a, a, a full lunge do a step Okay. But if you can start to angulate the hips in the six primary ways that it can go, extension, flexion, A, B, A, deduction, internal, external rotation, facilitated by natural, authentic movement of the body, mm-hmm. and you can start to see where limitations are. Even if you don't know what to look for, you can feel it. Yep. Ooh, that feels tight. Or crap, that hurts my knee. Mm-hmm. Or gosh, that really hurts my lower back. Well, first of all, don't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. But do the other patterns that are essentially clean or non-threatening. Um, I really like I really like this analogy, you know, and I really like how people can they can start here. Is that when you're trying to pull a stake out of the ground, you've been camping, or you've been doing something like that, you know, something where you just kind of lift something out of the ground, and it won't come out. You know, what do you do? What do you do to li- pull that stake or that stick out, out out of the ground? You move it in the ways that it can move. If it won't lift, you go side to side. If it does, can't go side to side, you go forward and back. If it doesn't go forward and back, you start to spin it. Yeah. And we all have the intuition built into our physics of understanding or our understanding of, of physics. So the hip is no different. Same laws of physics. So don't start to push something, push something like, oh, that hurts, that hurts. Yeah, listen, please. But don't stop there. Do what you can do successfully. So that's why I'm a big fan of those of that we call the lunge matrix. 
Um, we can do an arm swing matrix. You can, I mean, you could do a, quite a few, few things that really provide multi-directional, multi-dimensional access to your tissues to start saying, wow, that's, that's a strengthening drill in one leg, but it's actually a mobility drill in the opposite leg. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be quite frank with you, I would say that is, that is, if I would do that five each side every morning. Okay. As you're drinking a cup of coffee, I mean, you know, that'd be kind of the nice blend. That'd let's, be a nice blend. Let's, let's get some black coffee and get some fat you know, going on. There you go. I like it. I like, <laughs> yeah. it. I like it. Or bulletproof. It depends on, on your style, you know. But, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, but, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, we're, we're already burning fat as we get up in the morning, you know, it's like, why right. wreck it, you know? Let's, yeah. let's get some, let's, let's stay lean. I'm um, a big fan. I'm right, a big fan. No, no doubt. Um, so let me ask you this. So what, I don't know how I want to say it, but. I, I see folks focus heavily on their strengths mm -hmm. when they're when they're when they're lifting. Like I'm I'm good at X, I'm strong at X. So they just sort of continue to do those um, moves that they're already good at. And this just seems like you should focus on the areas where you have restriction. You know, you have lack of mobility, or you have, like you said, it just maybe that hurts. Um, what would you say to that person that just is always doing that thing that they're just already good at, um, or they're strong at, um, where, how would you, how would you, uh, communicate to that person to get them to understand how much this is going to really help them? Yeah, I would kind of, I would kind of say it like, you know, most of us, you know, probably listen to this, own a car or at least driven one for quite some, quite some time. At least I would say, you know, how often do you rotate your, your car's tires? Mm. And, you know, let's say, well, gosh, never. It's like, all right, well, the life of your tire is going to be significantly reduced. And the reason is because the weight of that car is not equal from right to left or from front to back. And if you don't change the tire, you're going to easily see a groove, a wear groove happening on that tire. Well, our joints experience that same wear groove because our ligaments are not equally ten, uh, don't have equal tension in them. Our tendons don't have equal tension in them through the soft tissue, fascial tissue, connective tissue. So we're gonna find a movement pattern that we like the best. And if we're really good at it, we're gonna do it a lot more. And if we're really strong at it, we're gonna try to get stronger. It's like just keep doing burnouts on your car and don't rotate your car tires. You're gonna, if you have an all wheel drive car, well, at least you're gonna burn the tires e you know, relatively equally. But, you know, front wheel, you're going to burn those front wheels faster, those back wheels faster. So I'm okay with that if you're okay with, okay with that and you're going to have to park that car a lot sooner. Yeah. How about we start to w rotate those car tires a little bit? doesn't mean stop doing your strengths, but spending a little bit more time, if not a lot more time, balancing out the wear and tear on your body so your joint, as you use the word joints loosely here, right? It's more ligaments and connective tissue that really gets beat up, yeah. you know, um, you know, so they don't get that stress, that tear, that micro, you know, kind of little abrasion in, in a sense, you know, the bursitis, the tendonitis, that was really an overplay symptom. And the cause of those symptoms are more than likely built into the way your body has a habitual pattern of movement. And if you don't know what those patterns are, I don't blame you, but start to play with the options and see where it is. And from there, well, if you still can't figure it out, well, there's very intelligent people out there to help you, right. more so now um, than Absolutely. ever before. Um, but, you know, so that would be, my, that'd be my, uh, my understanding analogy is that okay. I'm sure you'd have maintenance on a lot of things in your life. Better have maintenance on your car or on I mean, your body, excuse me. For sure, for sure, regularly. Um, uh, regularly. And, and, and speaking of yeah. regularly, um, you know, as we sort of start to wrap up a little bit, as we get close to time. Um, so if you have that person who is an athlete, you know, and they've been doing the linear training, you know, mm -hmm. most of their life or most of their, you know, career, you know, as an athlete, um, how much in a day or in a week should they start sort of incorporating these multi-directional you know, really intentional, functional, like movements, um, into their, into their training. Yeah. And people have to watch out when doing something new, you know, the body's body gets sore really when newness comes in, into the play, 
you know, not necessarily volume changes. Yes, that's a big play, but something new is for what I feel like is the biggest watch out for. Oh yeah. Um, so um, what I like about what, how we program is, you know, every single workout that we do is full body, every okay. workout. We do differentiate between the phy physiological systems of strength and cardiovascular to keep it simple. Um, so the energy systems can recover and et cetera. Mm -hmm. But, and we do that because every single day of our life is a full body workout. Yeah. In fact, I'm working out right now. I'm training my body to sit really well. My connective tissue, my front hip is densing down. You know, my posterior hips lengthening out. My hamstrings are starting to shorten on the back, on, on the, on the um, kind of distal side. My posture is being relaxed. My, I, Cause I don't have to, I got this thing behind me to support me. I'm really good. I'm in fact, I'm on rep 48, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm doing pretty well. So we have to understand that when you change something else, you have to have that understanding. Just like when I go on my summer vacation to, to Mexico, I'm white, I'm Irish white. Mm -hmm. I better take it easy day one. Yeah. Cause if not day two is going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be real, real miserable laying out in the sun. So um, we have to have that same respect for the human body. There's no such thing as an on-off switch. It's a dimmer switch. Mm -hmm. And don't turn, up the, 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 don't turn up the lights too fast. So I would say every day is fine. But I would say give yourself five minutes. Okay. I really mean it. Five, for someone who's brand new at this, give yourself five minutes. And even though you know you can go 10, don't. Because you're, you're there for the next day. Right. You know, we always say we are always training for t for tomorrow. Makes you sense. Know? And so I would say, and I would in, I would increase it not daily, but maybe every three days, five minutes the first three days. Again, I, you got to think about it. If whoever's done a, a a couch to marathon or couch to half marathon, you look at that training protocol. It's very gradual. Mm -hmm. In fact, you don't even run a marathon or half marathon until the marathon or the half marathon. So it's yeah. very progressive in approach and we like to get anxious and, and go for it. So take it easy. Time is relatively on your side. Um, avoid pain. Now there's two different types of pain. There's mental pain and there's physical pain. Avoid, yeah. me, uh, avoid physical pain. Um, and um, you got to have a curiosity to it. Got to have a curiosity to say, what, what, what can my hip do? What can my thoracic spine do? Now, mm -hmm. excuse, most people don't think like that. What can my body do in this direction? Yeah. What can my body do in that direction? What, how, how can my body really lean and look and look up or look down or look left or look right? And um, here's my last kind of closing thought here. Think about doing a plank. Mm -hmm. You know, most people can picture a plank and think about your hips going up, think about your hips going down, maybe a little past neutral too, depending on how, you, how strong you are, capable you are. Think about your hips sliding to the right, hips sliding to the left. Mm -hmm. Think about your right pocket dropping to the ground, coming back up, and left pocket dropping to the ground, coming back up. You just drove your pelvis in three dimensions. And every single muscle fiber that's connected it from the foot up, from the elbows down, got loaded eccentrically and exploded concentrically. That's it. All right, I'm doing my planks different. From here on out. From here on out. You got it, man. I'm, I'm definitely doing that. Well, Michael, man, this has been great. Um, uh, I just want to finish with just saying, one, I totally appreciate what you guys are doing. Um, I think Thanks. you're I think you're blazing new territory. Um, I think that um, the, the the concepts and the and the and the way that you guys are addressing the human body is something that is way, way, way overdue. Um, it's something I'm excited to just kind of dive into, um, even more so, um, than I already do and check out more about what you guys are doing. So I just am very uh, grateful to have you come on and, and just share, you know, with our audience, uh, all of that. And I would encourage everybody who's listening to this, to check the video out, uh, because you'll be able to see, um, exactly what, um, Michael was describing. So. Um, how can uh, our audience uh, connect more with you guys? Uh, is it social media, email? Um, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, yeah. If you're a if you're a client looking to move better, go to mm -hmm. go to our YouTube channel, um, Gymnazo Edu. 
check out our pod, pod podcast. Actually, if you're a coach or a or a or a client, quote unquote, you can go to both of those. Mm-hmm. If you're a if if you're a client looking to kind of see how this all p- p- kind of pans out, go to gymnazo.com. If you're a coach thinking like, gosh, how can I do this? How can I kind of glean this open source kind of stuff? Go to gymnazoedu.com because um, we we really we want to serve both. We want to serve yeah. both. Um, but um, YouTube channel is always great. It's always good to see here. Look, absolutely, absolutely love it. And I'm going to get this video up there as uh, quick as I can, so, so people can check it out. So, Michael, again, thank uh-huh. you very much. Thanks for coming on, and uh, good luck with everything. Keep 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 pushing forward. You guys are doing great work.